Hello and welcome to another video of the IT Career Guide YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to talk about the Google Certified Professional Cloud Architect certification and um, what benefits does it have, how much money you can make and what's really involved in becoming certified. If you want to know how much money you can make with this certification, stay tuned because at the end of the video, you will get the detail necessary. So what is the Google Certified Professional Cloud Architect certification all about? First of all, the Google Cloud Platform is one of the fastest growing cloud services um, offered today. Um, it's a competitor directly to Amazon's AWS or to Microsoft Azure. There are a couple of smaller cloud offerings, but um, Google, Amazon and Microsoft, those are the big players and um, they all have their own certifications. And uh, this certification specifically was um, established in 2017. Google decided to really take their cloud services to the next level. And uh, one of these steps necessary is really compare, make it comparable to what Amazon or Microsoft offer. And um, so besides the technical solution and the capabilities and how those compare, it's also um, who can support this environment um, who can help the Google customers to get the best value out of it. So Google really took a close look at the job market around it, at the services around it, and then also identified, okay, we probably need to work with certification so that people can establish the trust to potential employers by showcasing that they have achieved certain certifications. And that was really the birth of the Google Certified Professional Cloud Architect. In any of the major cloud services, again, be it Google, Amazon or Microsoft, customers can run their own applications and data workflows. Uh, they can run virtual machines. Uh, they can run the entire infrastructure um, of these cloud services. And um, accordingly, there's a lot of importance on uh, being able to design it correctly, to uh, structure and build it correctly so that when these customers go into production with their services or use it to run their company, um, that there is the right personnel behind it. And these certifications here really show the value and prove that the individual holding that certification is indeed a specialist in the specific technology. This was the information related to the cloud services. Now we want to take a closer look at the actual certification and what value does it provide. So the uh, professional cloud architect exam uh, really takes a couple of key approaches. First of all, they want to make sure that you know how to design and plan a cloud solution architecture. They want to know that you are able to manage and provision the cloud solution infrastructure. And then, of course, any offering in a cloud service needs to be secured. So information security and compliance, those are critical pieces. And again, this is a key item for the certification. And then when you take an on-prem solution of some sort and move it into the cloud, the Google Certified Professional Cloud Architect exam is really verifying that you are able to get the right information, identify really what is needed to lift and shift a solution, a service or a product from an on-prem or from a competing cloud service into the Google Cloud. And again, that's a key item that this exam will um, test you on and uh, when you pass this, um, everyone can be sure that you are the right person to do the job. And then of course, anything that is built, designed, planned, lifted and shifted into the cloud needs to operate at a certain point. So the cloud architect plays a really important role because if whatever he or she designs, builds, implements, lifts and shifts is not uh, really ready for production or is very difficult to maintain and to be supported, um, it's a disservice to the customer. So the exam it itself goes after this specific skill set. So to make sure that any type of solution that you architect can be managed, runs reliably and is um, easy to maintain. Easy, I don't necessarily want to say there is a certain complexity, but um, that it's a solution that can operate in a production status. So the uh, Google Certified Professional Cloud Architect exam um, it's not an easy one. So first of all, the exam goes for about two hours. There's a registration fee that you need to pay in advance of about $200. It is offered in uh, English and Japanese. The format is multiple choice and you can do it either from remote um, or from a test center. 
there are no prerequisites that you need to meet. Um, I mean, other than learning the material and uh, knowing your stuff. Uh, the recommended experience, though, is at least three years of industry experience plus one year experience designing and managing solution, uh, managing solutions uh, inside the Google Cloud. All common cloud services provider have their environment-specific knowledge that you need to acquire. So if you come from Amazon and you go to Google, some portions will overlap, but there is some Google-specific knowledge that this person needs to know. And that's really the recommendation by Google for the certification that you have at least one year experience um, with the Google Cloud. Ideally, you probably want to have a little more, but um, it's, it's a, a recommendation. It's not a requirement. So don't freak out when you see this. It's more about the overall knowledge first in regards to be, um, in regards to cloud services, systems architecture, designing solutions, and being able to build and manage solutions uh, in a production state. So and then you put the Google specific information and knowledge that you need to learn on top of it, and that's really um, what you need to know when you go into the exam. How do you prepare for the exam? So um, besides having some experience or a lot of experience, um, there is some training available. So, so Google teamed up with Coursera and uh, is offering online training there. Uh, Google is using uh, Coursera almost exclusively for most of their certifications and they even offer a discount um, sometimes for the entire course. Uh, sometimes just for the first month. Uh, Coursera is a subscription-based service, but you can also just purchase it for um, a certain time frame or course. Then, of course, there are plenty of third-party training courses available. Um, you can spend uh, almost any amount of money, so you're looking at uh, from, from a few hundreds to thousands of dollars that you can spend on training, boot camps, certification training materials, so um, not just getting um, the overall knowledge delivered, but also like exam-related specifics that you can acquire that way. And then, of course, there's a way to self-study or to supplement any of the studies and training by purchasing books. So I did some uh, research and um, I found a total of three books uh, specifically for this exam. They're all very current. They're from the late uh, 2019. It's usually the first edition of this book, so that tells you really how new this certification is. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, it was established in 2017. Currently, there's the a beta version of the next version of this exam certification available uh, on Google's website. Um, they offer a lower price in that specific um, beta exam, but uh, you can go for that one or you can go for the regular one. If you pass, you will be certified and um, you will get to the same goal. So um, I will put links to the um, Amazon uh, product pages for these books down below. Those are affiliate links, so I will earn a small commission in case you purchase the books uh, through my affiliate links. There's no cost associated with you, but I wanna make sure that you know that I'm really transparent here. So now um, we're coming to the really important question that you're all waiting for potentially. How much money can you earn when you become a Google certified professional cloud architect? And there are different numbers floating around. So I have to be a little vague, unfortunately, but I think it also depends on really what is your overall experience? So, and um, the numbers probably give you a good idea. And of course, the other thing that is missing is really where in the United States are you located? Are you living at the West Coast where it's really expensive? Are you living somewhere in the middle where it's a little cheaper or down south where it's really cheap or in the um, Eastern uh, seaboard area from uh, Washington DC going all the way up to Boston. So there are definitely variations um, possible. Even the highest number that you will see here might not be the ceiling. So just uh, be aware this is a framework. Um, I'm putting this disclaimer out accordingly, but it gives you guidance. And especially if you want to get into this area of information technology, I think it will really be helpful for you to understand that there's a significant amount of money to be made. So let's have a look. So the highest salary that I found was um, over $175,000. This number comes from the year 2020 and it comes from the Global Knowledge Report. Um, there are quite a few other salary numbers in there. 
And um, I did some more research and checked Glassdoor and um, other websites. So I think that's a pretty accurate number. And um, of course, there are other benefits. You might get equity share depending on where you work. Uh, so take this with a grain of salt. But that's from a salary perspective for 2020, the average salary that uh, the Global Knowledge Report has recorded. Then I found some numbers going back to 2019 and the numbers are a little lower and I think it uh, is actually probably pretty accurate if you look at the 175 and then at the next number the 139,529. So 139,529 dollars. That number was reported by Forbes magazine. There's another one that was reported by CNN just slightly lower with 136,185. So those numbers are from 2019 and partially 2020. Um, but the highest number is from 2020 and it's a fairly updated report that I found. So I would think with the pandemic happening in 2020 and more people and more companies moving into the cloud um, that it's quite possible that the salaries have gone up. Then for 2021, I found one other number and it was really more from a job listing that I found on Simply Hired. So there was um, a job listing for this specific job title and position and the salary range was listed as 110,000 to 160,000. I did not do any research where that company is. I did not pay any attention to the details. This was really just, okay, let's take this number, throw it into the mix and then really compare those numbers. And I think that's really the value, hopefully that you get out of this slide here. So um, there's a range and the range depends on where you live, what's your experience level, what is your overall background in IT, and um, what is your college degree potentially. So which industry are you working in? So and I think that's really um, very helpful. And even 110 is a great salary depending on where you live in the United States. It might not be as much worth in Palo Alto compared to Birmingham, Alabama. But in general, just knowing that there is this range, I think provides a lot of value. So when you walk into a job interview and you get asked what your salary expectation is, that you can provide a range. So some final words in regards to um, the specific uh, certification and the related job behind it. So currently cloud and information security are the hottest areas in information technology. So you can expect that those salaries increase with a slightly above average level compared to normal jobs in IT. And normal, I put in quotes, again, there is nothing such as normal, but if you look at the standard jobs in infrastructure or uh, systems architecture. Be aware when you become Google certified or Amazon AWS certified or Microsoft certified, you're putting yourself a little bit into the corner with this vendor. So you're locking yourself a little bit into that corner and that's not necessarily a bad thing. So there is a lot of value for people that are highly specialized on these platforms. And there's a lot of more money to be made and a lot of exciting work to be done on projects and services. Where you might have difficulties if you want to go from a vendor that works with Google, a company that works with Google, to a company that uses Microsoft Azure or Amazon AWS. Well, the basic foundation, your, your foundational knowledge for cloud is the same that you can carry over. The environment specifics lock you in a little bit and tie you to Google, Amazon or Microsoft, but not the other. So if you want to switch from Google to Amazon, um, you have to expect that you have to relearn quite a few things. Um, even if you go for the exam for Amazon AWS, architecture, um, yeah, you will face new challenges and get questions that you have never seen before. The same thing here then in regards to how many open positions are there or how many positions in general. Um, it's a smaller number of positions, but the advantage is also these are very challenging certifications to achieve. So the pool of people with that certification is significantly smaller. So you will have less competition, but you're also competing for a smaller number of positions. So just be aware and hopefully you're planning for the long term um, and really then get the benefits of being with a company for a long time, acquiring more knowledge, becoming really, really specialized and pushing up your value as well so that you can earn more money. So 
that is it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so. I really appreciate it. And then I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.